Hi, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to look at the different brushes that I have used over the last eight years since I've kept my sketchbooks. I have used a range of brushes from the water brush to round brushes and then the quill brushes and we're going to take a closer look at them. When I began bending in watercolour I realised there were a huge number of choices out there. There are thousands of brushes to choose from and understanding them all takes a level of research that can feel intimidating even before you make your first stroke. Even for me, when I began my watercolour journey, selecting a brush felt really overwhelming and I almost gave up after my first sketch as I just didn't know how to control the bristles of my round brush. So a much more experienced artist suggested that I might like to start with water brushes like these. They're a type of paintbrush that comes with its own refillable water barrel and the two bits screw together with a clip on cap that stops the water from leaking out when you're not using it. And as you use this brush, the water in the barrel gradually seeps down from the reservoir into the bristles, which means that the bristles are permanently moist or damp. There are different brands of water brushes to look out for, and they pretty much work the same. I use a mixture of the Pentel, and the other one featured here is the Secura water brush. The size and shape of the water reservoir will differ between brands as well as the size of the brush bristles. And the water brush is pretty much how I started in the early days of my sketchbook practice. This particular water brush was probably the equivalent of a number four round brush and as you can see it doesn't actually hold very much water if you don't squeeze the barrel and let the water come out. So then I moved up to the equivalent of maybe a number six round brush. As I gained confidence, I was able to manipulate this brush better and cover larger areas. I'm gonna show you a sketchbook that I would have used the brush pens in. This is sketchbook number nine, which I started in September, 2016 first thing you'll notice is it is quite a small scale if I put my hand against the page. It's much smaller than the type of sketchbooks I currently work in. If you compare my thumbnail against that house, it's really, really small. And that corresponds with what I'm able to achieve with the tip of that brush pen. There really isn't very much colour mixing. You don't see very much blending. There's a little bit, but not very much. Oh, I've forgotten I've done this. That's quite nice, isn't it? A bit of negative space there. So it's pretty simple what I'm achieving using the brush pen and it's fairly early on in my experience as well. Round brushes are the most versatile and probably the most commonly used brushes in watercolour painting. It can be used for painting large areas of wash with broad strokes and it should have the ability to form a good point to enable you to use it for finer details if you need it. Round brushes range in size from 0 to about 20. These brushes here on the right are Dala Rowney, that is a round brush size 16. And the two on the far left are Winsor & Newton and they are Sable size 6 and 4. For the round brushes I've just showed you, I've got sketchbook number 15 as an example of a sketchbook that I would have used it in. It's November 2017 when I started this. And you can see it's a bigger scale now. You know, if we've gone up in size, if you compare that. And with the round brushes, I'm just able to achieve a little bit more in terms of blending. You can see that I'm starting to gain a bit more confidence with textures like that. And uh, I'm a lot more playful. Oh, this is one of my favorite pieces. Um, <laughs> it's not really about the, uh, the round brush. <laughs> I really like incorporating the, the white gel pen here. If I show you some better examples where we have a lot of pigments mixing where I was starting to play around with the watercolours on the page. You'll see that um, 
I'm achieving some really nice effects here. This is one of my favourite sketchbook pieces. You can see where I have added ink to aid with details and definition of edges. By this stage I was probably using a number 8 or 10 round brush and it was much bigger so the belly of the brush, that is the widest part of the bristles, is what determines how much water and how much pigment it can carry and a brush with a bigger belly will carry more water and pigment than that of a smaller one. Also using a larger brush meant I needed less strokes so there is now the capacity for the pigments that I do apply on the paper to merge together. In my quest to find bigger brushes and better movement, better expressiveness, I stumbled upon this Chinese brush which I'd had in my collection for quite a while and I thought let's give it a go. This is Sketchbook 21 which I started in April 2020 and the early pieces of this sketchbook I was still using a round brush but I did find that I wanted to create these beautiful effects and it helped if I changed my brush up from a size 8 round then I changed it to a 10 and then a 12 and then a 14 and I just thinking I, I, I need bigger and bigger brushes to sort of achieve some of these effects and uh, eventually, I think um, around about here, I started using the, what I called a Chinese brush. And when I researched some more, I realized that there's something called quill brushes. And I think it's actually this one where I finally bought myself a quill brush. And you can see the amount of pigments that are now mixing on the page. And I really loved seeing this. So ever since then, I've been using a, a quill brush in all my sketchbook pieces. And I think it's made all the difference in terms of simplifying and also going with the flow, letting things happen at their own pace. Now let's have a closer look at quill and mop brushes. When I first started using them, I didn't know there was a slight difference. They do look quite similar. A mop brush is designed to hold plenty of water for the purpose of painting over large areas easily. Quill brushes differs from other brushes by how they're made. A quill brush may or may not be a mop brush and you can see that they are held together with uh, plastic and it's tightened with wire or string. However, quill brushes hold a sharper point compared to mops. That is what I was after and with these quill brushes by Jackson's I found something that completely served my purposes and it was like hitting the jackpot. It was like bingo, I have found the brush that I want to be using for the effects that I want to create right now. If you've never used a quill brush it would be really helpful for you to see how they behave compared to a round brush. Here we have the Winsor & Newton and Dala Rowney and you'll see the type of marks and strokes that they are able to make and how much pigment they can hold before running out. That was the number 6 Winsor & Newton and this one here is the number 14 Dala Rowney. It's that much bigger so it can hold more pigment. Now let's move on to the quill brushes. Quill brushes handle differently than the more common round brushes and learning to use them can be a fun challenge. Once the learning curve is over, however, you'll be thrilled at what they are capable of. Quills can unload water fast, so you have to keep it moving, which makes it a great brush for expressive strokes. I think it's worth buying and experimenting with a small quill first, like this Jackson's one. This next one I'm showing you is by Winsor & Newton and they call it medium. And it's something that you have to be careful of when choosing a quill brush as different art manufacturers vary their sizes. If you take a look at the larger round brushes and compare it to the quills there doesn't seem to be much difference but I can certainly tell the difference when you start to add pigment onto the page as they just carry so much more. 
In my book, Go With The Flow Painting, I do have a chapter on art supplies, including brushes, nibs, paper, sketchbooks, as well as getting into the flow state and the characteristics of loose watercolours, such as not working tight, using larger brushes for looseness so that you can have more expressive and intentional sweeps. And also much of the fluidity is achieved by adding wet paint into wet washes, allowing the pigments to spread out unhindered, causing blooms such as these. Moving on from that sketchbook, I want to show you sketchbook 25, which is actually A4. There's the size comparison, and that I think is directly related to the size of the brushes I was using. And you can see that my florals have got huge and beautiful pigment mixing here. This is the Hanamula. Oh, this is again one of my favorite pieces. Beautiful pigments just diffusing out like that. The purples and the greens, I love it. And I actually created this during the Chroma course in early 2022. Because the brush could hold so much pigment, I was able to load it up with water and pigment. And I'm not able to achieve these effects unless there was a lot of water present. Look at that. Gorgeous. And I am so thankful that I discovered quill brushes. I think these anemones are also particularly stunning. Look at gorgeous colours that I was able to achieve in there. And this would have just been the one stroke and I would have had dropped in an extra bit of pigment in the middle and then finished it off with a brush pen. I'll probably do a class about combining the two. Let me know in the comments if you think that would be something you'd be interested in. I really hope you've enjoyed my video about the different brushes that I have used over my many years of watercolour practice. I would be so grateful if you would subscribe, like and comment. I really love hearing from all of you and sharing your insights and experiences.